fact, now property still remains an asset class in South Af that South Africans are most passionate about and uh, typically their largest investment uh, that they will make. Now, record low interest rates should be driving demand for property, but uh, this is still being offset by cautious South African households and high unemployment in the country. The question South Africans should be asking, should I be a buyer right now? Or should I settle for what I have? I'm still joined by Garth Tennyson from Finweek. And we've got John Luce, uh, F&B household and property sector strategist. And Rita Scutter, regional executive of Pam Golding Properties, to help us answer this question. Um, you know, I suppose the, the issue, Mark, is really, um, if it's cheap, should I buy it? Correct. And I think that's one thing that's been quite interesting. I was just driving around Randburg over the weekend. We've been looking at property for a while now. And it's been very interesting to see... The, the disconnect between what people are asking for their properties and what they're ultimately accepting. And there's some quite cool tools that you can look at online. And, and it's quite interesting to find trends that are there that people are saying, you know, I'm asking 1.4, but I'm happy to entertain from, one, uh, say, 1.1. And it's quite a significant de decrease if you believe that your assets are tied up in the properties, in your property. Um, it's quite a big drop from what you're expecting and what you're ultimately mm -hmm. prepared to take. And, and I, I just driving around the neighborhood, I get the sense there's more and more property coming onto the market, particularly in the um, larger free, freestanding properties. And I just, I mean, I'm curious to know, is it a buyer's market out there? Why we've got the low interest rates, there's probably a possibility of another interest rate cut in the first qu quarter of next year. Um, you know, is there an opportunity here for, for, for savvy buyers? And of course, what you need to consider, I mean, John, when you talk about more properties coming onto the market, is that the case right now? Well, I think compared to perhaps a year ago or so, it's, it seems to be that there's a better supply. I think um, sellers also have a bit of a cycle and uh, not all sellers are desperate to sell. Those who want to downscale for life stage, for instance, they'll buy their time and when they perceive the market to be a little bit stronger, mm -hmm. they might try their luck and put their house on the market. And I think from earlier this year, it, will, it, it seemed to be the case that the supply got, got a little bit better. So is, is it, are you also seeing that, Rita, from your side? We actually, I would say that we're going to the opposite of it, to say that we're looking at stock shortages, certainly in some areas, but that also is a demand. So certain areas, certain price brackets, obviously there's far more buyers interested in buying those properties. So in that sort of market, you'd look at a, short, a shortage of stock. But then also, I mean, the reality of it is, if you're going to go to the market and you're overpricing your property, you are not going to realize a sale. It's going to take a long time. It's going to stay on the market. And unfortunately, it also happens that if you are going to go through that process of overpricing, you are ultimately going to get less than what you would if you go to the market at a reasonably priced market-related price, you will achieve much better. But, but, I mean, you talk about various regions or sectors yes. uh, within the property space that mm. is doing very well and you yes. are seeing strong demand coming through. Yeah. So, so break it down for us. Um, I would say below 5 million is where the market is at the moment, um, but then strong demand between 1 and 2 million and then a sectional title market obviously which takes you below the 1 million. Uh, strong, strong demand. So there we're realizing very good prices. So in that instance, if you come in as a buyer, you're going to have to come very close to what is on offer or what, what the property is offering on price. Mm -hmm. But we're also seeing, which is very positive, is that for the first time we are seeing multiple offers coming through. So the buyers are coming to properties, especially new properties coming onto the market. If it's a good proposition, we're seeing more people offering on the same property. I mean, no interest rates is really the key that you're talking about here and that you do have that access to finance, which is very cheap. Uh, what are your thoughts on the kind of the environment in which the property sector is right now? Well, I think, as you say, interest rates are low um, and, and it's attractive, certainly, but you've got to bear in mind that interest rates at some point will, will turn in the other direction. I think the advantage of buying now, particularly if you're buying your primary residence and you're looking to stay there long term, is that prices are depressed. So. You, you're going to get a 20-year mortgage with, at a lower price, whereas if perhaps if you wait a couple of years and the, and the market picks up, you're, you, you're going to be paying off a larger um, principal amount um, over that 20 years. So, so that's the advantage. Um, on the other hand, I think people are also very, to some extent, repairing their balance sheets. Um, you know, a lot of people went a little bit wild in the good times. Um, and also people are, are not that certain of their jobs. Um, mm. if, you, if you're not sure if, if you're going to have a job in a year's time, um, or you know, if, the, if you might face retrenchments, you might be a lot more um, cautious you know, with taking on huge debt for, for a long time. 
John, I mean, maybe a question for you. I mean, are, are prices genuinely depressed? It's very difficult. It feels anecdotal that it should be depressed if you look at the, the consumer environment, but it doesn't, if you just flip through the paper, it doesn't seem to suggest the prices are. No, I think it's still an overvalued market. Uh, what I mean by that is that I think for the, over the next number of years, there will be significant real house price decline. The market overshot in the boom uh, for various reasons, speculative pressures being one, but buyer panic being another. That's when buyers start fearing that if they don't get into the market now, it's, they're not going to be able to afford it. So you have these overshoots. Real house prices peaked in early 2008. They've declined in real, in our real terms, for just for the listeners, is when you, you don't necessarily have nominal declines. We have had one or two periods of nominal decline, but uh, you have lengthy periods where, where price inflation uh, is lower than CPI inflation and wage inflation, and that's how not a lot of the correction takes place. It takes place like that because you need the inflation illusion. A lot of sellers don't understand inflation. They don't want to drop their nominal price. They stick to their price. And over time, in, if they just stick to their price um, in real terms, therefore, it, 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 it declines. Now, um, these cycles, typically the, the, the typical property cycle, 15 to 20 years in length, the big cycle, the super cycle, last bottom point being 1998. And I think we've got some way, some years to go till the bottom of the next one. So more real price decline, driven by high levels of indebtedness, uh, a, a, a miserable global economy pe uh, teetering along at, 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 at not much and, and causing our economy to be mediocre as well. Uh, that doesn't drive job creation. Um, and then big adjustments to costs related to housing as mm. well. I'm talking about the electricity and the municipal rates and tariffs, uh, especially on the larger sized um, segments. So there are some big adjustments, big financial adjustments that the household sector has to undergo. It is under pressure. Um, and I think that's going to bring down the pri real price of houses significantly in the next few years. If I can just ask one question, don't you think that now is a good time to be a buyer, at least from the point of view that it's easier to try and negotiate a better price with a seller who might be a bit sticky in not wanting to lower his, his selling price, but it's easier to negotiate at a time when the economy is under pressure and you're not facing that much competition from other buyers? Well, I think, um, it, look, it's it's... A better, it's a significantly better time to buy than what it was in uh, early 2008 or late sure. 2007. That we know now was a, a big mistake, probably. Um, so yes, it's improved, but uh, I think that the the buying opportunity will get better. Okay. Uh, I suspect uh, if, if um, now it's difficult to know when interest rates are going to peak next time around, but I m believe that the next time the interest rate hiking cycle peaks that may be the time when real house prices bottom out more or less. And so in a few so, so years... So when you talk to you, are talking about this, the years that we're going to have real price um, declines in, in houses. Yeah. Um, how long is that? I mean, can you put... Look, it's difficult to put, a, put an exact date to things. Yeah. That's always the problem with any market is timing the bottom of a cycle. But I suspect it's going to be somewhere well into the second half of this decade. So, so would you say, Arisa, that the time is on buyer's sides right now, basically? I wouldn't. I would buy. If I had to go out, and especially, I mean, if you look at the investment market, you're looking at the buy to let. We are see, see, um, certainly seeing a whole lot of investors coming back, looking at buying properties. At the moment, the demand for rental property is just absolutely so big that we don't have enough supply. So we're looking at scenarios where previously we'd go to 0.5 um, return. It's now gone up to 0.7. In some instances, security estates even higher. So. It depends on what your outlook is. It could be a scenario where you want to invest, and certainly if you look at what's happening at the moment, houses still obviously is safe as houses, so I would invest in that. And as a buyer, I agree that you certainly have a better negotiating power at the moment. Because there's uncertainty, sentiment, the market is not great. If you've got a seller, obviously that needs to relocate to a different town or it's got different reasons to sell, you are gonna be able to negotiate and you are gonna do a good buy. D talking about buy to let and also yeah. specifically um, in the um, sectional title space, yes. don't you think there's an oversupply of two bedroom, one or two bathroom type uh, units in Joburg? Um, it just seems like everyone and their gym trainer has, has got an investment in, in that sort of thing. Um, and I get the sense, just again anecdotally from people I know, that um, a lot of those guys are actually regretting that they bought properties like that a, a couple of years ago um, because one, they're facing tenants that are starting to default, they're coming under pressure themselves, um, and there's just this massive supply of that sort of unit. 
supply we're not finding supply the problem it might be a scenario where if you bought the property and you paid a lot for it and you've got a high bond mm. and certainly with the, with the rates and taxes and all the expenses that that comes along with it and defaulting tenants it might put stress on the investment but it certainly is also a scenario to go and maybe speak to a professional agent get it um, pro properly vetted before you, you place your tenants and go through that process uh, but I certainly wouldn't sell any investment property because there's no demand. For so you don't think there's an oversupply of it? Absolutely yeah, not. I mean, I think okay. John touched on something. Uh, like I, in, in my social circle, this whole thing about the, the actual cost of maintaining and yeah. running a property, mm -hmm. rates and taxes, yeah. is actually getting to the point where it's fundamentally affecting the decision of what. Yes. If you mm -hmm. buy a million rand house and let's say your bond repayment's about eight and a half thousand on that, I mean, your rates and taxes are another four, four, four and a half thousand, depending on where you are. I mean, that's, that's a hell of a chunk. You know, out of your cost, and and I think that that I mean, do you get the sense that that's actually impacting buyers' decisions at the moment? Because mm -hmm. it's not just what you're paying now; it's double digit going forward for mm -hmm. the next three, four years to water, electricity, and I mean, the, the quality of service is still very, very average. I mean, do do buyers? Wor I mean, is that a concern for you guys? No. From your side, uh, John. I think it is a th there's a huge adjustment that has to be made. The housing stock, the the the, the composition of it is outdated. It's a 1970s. Uh, style housing stock with, uh, with low density, a lot of very spacious. It is densifying over time, but there's still many years of adjustments to a much higher density of living uh, to, to, to uh, adjust for, I think, big, big increases in transport costs in the years to come. I'm not sure these toll roads will come off, but in some form we've got to pay for that infrastructure, be it through a fuel levy or what. Um, and, uh, and of course, electricity has ratcheted up its cost, but we haven't really started with water and sewage and others yet. Mm -hmm. So I think there are big cost increases to come. That's the reality. We've got to fund infrastructure upgrades. And the housing stock, uh, the mindset of South Africans was a, was a was sort of a spacious living one with the swimming pool, you know, the middle and upper income South Africans. And a lot of that stock is outdated. Far, a far smaller percentage of people in future are going to be, be living that luxurious lifestyle that mm -hmm. we, well, my generation mm -hmm. grew up with. 